Okay guys, welcome back. This is your old pal Honda doing a, another video for you guys. I know this is kind of out of the norm of what I usually do. Um, today, um, well last night, apparently uh, General Prigozhin, which is the head of the uh, Wagner Force in Ukraine, has basically said Saturday this morning that Russian Army... Um, he accused the Russian army of airstrikes on his uh, on his positions to try to basically assassinate him and pretty much kill him off. He's blaming Sergei and other people in uh, the Kremlin for ordering this attack on him. He's been uh, for months now. He's been criticizing the uh, the Russian military uh, general staff for its inability to uh, basically equip his soldiers to help fight in Bakhmut. He's been criticizing them for months now, and it's escalated to the point of open rebellion now. And uh, the news has been flowing here recently about um, Rogozhin um, basically accusing the Russian army of attacking Wagner and in Bakhmut area in Ukraine. Uh, as you can see, this was a video that he put out earlier uh, yesterday, or was it today? I can't remember. I know it happened Saturday where he was showing um, hundreds of his dead soldiers complaining about the Russians attacking his group, his mercenary group, basically. Um, Sergoyu, he's blaming Sergoyu and several other people in the Russian military general staff for provoking the attack. Um, now it's been a fluid situation so far. You're getting a lot of conflicted uh, reports out there right now. Uh, apparently uh, Pergosian has, has basically swung around and invaded parts of Russia. He calls it a, a march of equality. That's what he was claiming is that as when he first started going into Russia as well, um, he, he's, and he's left his positions in uh, Bakhmut, and he has gone into the towns of Rostan, Rostanon, and Vornets. I'm sorry if I'm murdering the Russian uh, town's names, but basically he's taken over two towns already. Apparently there was uh, a few helicopters from the uh, Russian Air Force that did attack their columns. There's over about 400 um, uh, Wagner vehicles on the road right now. Uh, Rogozhin did threaten to basically march into Moscow. Uh, they pretty much stopped at the uh, city of Voronezh. And uh, basically took over the headquarters that were basically overseeing the uh, war in, in Ukraine. Um, basically, this is going to show some of the weakness for Vladimir Putin uh, to the rest of the world in Ukraine. They, uh, the Chechen forces that are in Ukraine right now have basically left their positions to meet up with the... Uh, the Wagner Group stationed in these areas. I don't, it, nobody knows how many of the uh, Chechen forces are on their way en route to confront Wagner and Prigozhin at these uh, areas right here, as you can see. Um, apparently, they invaded all. Well, it's not really an invasion. It's not even an open rebellion now because you're getting conflicting reports now on both sides saying that it stopped and uh, that the president of Belarus basically um, talked to Putin to basically give Prigozhin a way out. Uh, he wanted to meet up with Sergoyu and the Russian general staff at Voronezh, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm murdering the, uh, the Russian town's name, And uh, within like a few hours, we've had 
um, from Russian state media basically saying Russia Ukraine war, Russia drops charges against um, parliamentary uh, paramilitary chief who staged the uprising. The move came after Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of Wagner mercenary groups, halted his forces march on Moscow. Basically, they stopped at Varenich, and they're not going to pursue um, going into uh, Moscow. Um, Kremlin spokesman said Mr. Prigozhin would go to Belarus, basically send Prigozhin to Belarus, which probably is a trap. But basically, the Russians have said that they're going to give amnesty to most of the Wagner groups that didn't participate within the uh, uprising and not press charges on them. But, you know, Yevgeny Prigozhin will probably be detained at some point. We don't know yet. We don't even know if these reports are true or not. I mean, you know, Russia is good about uh, this information, but I guess Prigozhin thought he could do this and have all of Russia backing his play and basically trying to, to get terms. He didn't quite say um, Putin's name whenever this uh, whole rebellion started. Uh, he was just dissatisfied with the Russian staff, basically. For months, not getting uh, the uh, weapons they needed to help in the fight against the Ukrainians in Bagmut. Okay, here here is the latest on the standoff between Prigozhin and Russian military. The outlines of a deal that appeared to defuse a rapidly evolving Russian security crisis began to come into focus Saturday, late Saturday as the Kremlin announced that a Russian mercenary leader who for nearly 24 hours led an armed uprising against the country's military leadership would flee to Belarus and his fighters would escape retribution. The announcement capped one of the most tumultuous days in President Vladimir Putin's more than 23 year rule in Russia and followed a apparent intervention by the leader of neighboring Belarus who stepped in to negotiate a solution to the crisis directly with the head of the Wagner private military company uh, Yevgeny V. Prigozhin who was leading the revolt, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry S. Peskov, I'm oh, sorry if I murdered his name, told reporters that under an agreement brokered by Alexander G. Lukashenko, which is the leader of Belarus, the leader of Belarus, Mr. Prigozhin, would go to Belarus, which is probably a trap, basically to try to get terms and say basically you all get amnesty and blah 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 if you stand down, which he's probably going to be captured and then probably executed. Um, and the criminal case opened against him, basically, that's basically what it's saying, opened against him for organizing an armed insurrection would be dropped. Wagner fighters who didn't participate in uprising would be given the option of uh, signing Russian defense military contracts, which is basically joining regular uh, Russian military groups, basically Russian, uh, the Russian army. Mr. Prigozhin said, and the rest would avoid prosecution. Basically, those who those who were in Wagner would join regular Russian military uh, groups and they would get amnesty basically from 
the uh, insurrection, that conversion, started late Saturday. But this, in itself, is exposing the underlying corruption and uh, inability of the Russian military to have cohesion to even fight a war against them. They, they wouldn't really last, you know what I mean? I mean, it would be a bad situation. I mean, because, you know, Russia already has sent most of its highly advanced uh, nuclear um, nuclear missiles to Belarus, and they've raised over a million soldiers to basically finish off Ukraine. But this right here just exposes the infighting in between the Russian military and certain military groups within the Russian hierarchy that it just shows cracks that they basically don't want to do this for. Because, yeah, I mean, you can look at some of the, the early days when the, when the Ukrainian war first started where a lot of these Russian soldiers were just surrendering because they didn't want to even fight in this war. They don't even know why they're fighting in this war. They complained about the Russian terror, Russian military staff being underfunded, not getting paid, um, not getting the weapons they needed to fight this war. You know what I'm saying? So, so a situ more situations like this might arise. Now, the Ukrainians uh, um, publicly stated saying that we'll see what happens because they're not really banking on anything you know, to come about this, you know what I mean? It, but it does expose to the rest of the world that, you know, Russia is basically infighting with itself, you know? So, this might be a, but as, as far as this war keeps going on, this might become a, a common occurrence of, you know, infighting and open rebellion against the uh, Duma and the Kremlin because of this, what's been going on, you know what I mean? The Wagner fighters who didn't participate, yeah, we already read that, um, Mr. Prokosian said, and the rest would avoid prosecution considering their heroic deeds on the front. There was a higher goal to avoid bloodshed, to avoid an internal internal uh, I guess internal conflicts to avoid clashes with unsurmountable consequences. Mr. Pergru Mr. Pascal said it was in the name of it was in the name of these goals uh, that Lubashenko mentioned efforts were realized and President Putin made the, the compensation core made the decision to, in an audio statement earlier in the uh, evening, Mr. Pergosian announced that his troops marching towards Moscow would turn around its forces, which had seized Southern Military District Headquarters, which is really big because those are the Southern Military um, Headquarters that basically have been orchestrating the whole war in Ukraine. So this is a significant uh, a event, especially for Ukraine, because if they have this situation going, you know, the Ukrainians could probably um, take an opportunity to use this to basically, you know, use against them to the UN and say, look, they're freaking cracks in the, the Russian military, they're they're not, there's no cohesion, you know, they're weak. It basically does show that they're weak. I mean, it, this this came at the worst opportune time for Vladimir Putin to expose the very fact of the inability of the Russian army to basically uh, keep pursuing a war in Ukraine. Also appeared to be leaving footage shared on social media 
In a brief address on Saturday morning, Mr. Putin had called the mutiny an act of treason. Basically, he went on his state media and basically called out what was going on, but he didn't directly say Prigozhin's name was basically treason by who were delivering a stab in the back of our country and our people. Mr. Prigozhin, after lashing out on Friday at the Russian military over the handling of the war in Ukraine, took control of Rostov in early in the early morning and began moving his armed military convoys towards the Russian capital. Mr. Putin, in turn, scrambled security forces in southwestern Russia and Moscow. So basically, they um, fortified their forces in those regions, scared, thinking that Prigozhin was going to basically go into uh, and Moscow, which is basically their capital, and basically seize it and, you know, depose Vladimir Putin as president. The situation shifted quickly late Saturday when Mr. Lovensko, <laughs> Lukashenko, I'm sorry, office in a statement said that Mr. Prigozhin had agreed to the Belarusian leader's proposal to stop the movement of armed persons of the Wagner Company in an audio statement posted to Telegram shortly afterwards, Mr. Bergerson said he was turning around and to avoid a Russian bloodshed and leaving in the opposite direction to the field camps. Basically, they turn their forces around and they're going back to their um, training camps in southern Russia. Um, in accordance to the plan. Mr. Prigozhin, the Kremlin spokesman, said the leadership of Belarus, who had long been personally acquired with Mr. Prigozhin, I'm sorry, personally acquainted with Mr. Prigozhin, proposed <coughs> serving as my I guess moderator and Mr. Putin agreed. So basically they're going to go, he's going to go to Belarus. He's going to be a moderator between Putin and Prigozhin to de-escalate this whole situation. You know, basically it is de-escalated and, you know, but, you know, this could be conflicted uh, news reporting, you know, from Russia. Russia is notorious for putting out misinformation with the FD, the F. SD, which is their, um, their their secret service or their basically their spy organization to put out this information. We really don't know if this is true or not. It may be true. We don't know. Really, this is like the the newest, latest uh, um, news with this whole situation. This whole fluid situation what's going on on the ground in southern Russia right now. We are grateful to the president for his efforts, Mr. Prigozhin said. Here is the latest. The uh, mercenary Wagner leader, that's mercenary, Wagner leader, long running criticism of Moscow military leadership erupted in, into open confrontation on Friday, basically started Friday, when he accused the Russian army of attacking his forces. I guess they, they basically bombed his forces trying to kill him and as many as they could of the Wagner group, probably a failed attempt on his life, and pleaded to retaliate. Russian authorities said they were charging Mr. Prigozhin with organizing an armed rebellion against the Russian president in audio messages on Saturday, blah, 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 um, rejected accusations, originally rejected the accusations of treason, and said that his forces were patriots in our motherland. You know, basically you get what I was 
But what they're getting at is basically he sent his troops into southern Russia and threatened to go into Moscow basically to get the terms that he wanted because they filed charges against him for treason. So he basically, I don't know if he gets what he wants, but he's still probably going to get charged with treason and probably going to be either executed or in prison for the rest of his life. His, his military forces that were under his banner will be um, put into regular uh, Russian military units. They'll be uh, pardoned, basically. But they'll be going into regular uh, military uh, Russian units. Uh, he didn't get what he wanted, basically. He wanted uh, Sergoyu and a few of the other Russian general staff to be basically uh, fired from the positions for um, negligence and pretty much corruption. I don't know, there's conflicting results that Putin did fire those generals. I'm not sure. We really don't know until more uh, factual um, news comes out of what's really going on. We really don't know. This is what the Russians are putting out. Um, so you really, you have to take everything with a grain of salt with the Russians because the Russians say one thing and then they do another. But as this unfolds, I'll probably uh, get back with you guys and uh, report more about this fluent situation that's going on in uh, Russia as we speak and the Ukrainian conflict. Um, now, like I said, it just shows cracks of inability to even... Uh, for Putin to basically pursue the war in Ukraine, and if they did, it would be a it would be a bad situation for Russia, um, because you know this just shows cracks in their uh, military and basically the leadership in Russia. They may probably um, take Putin. They'll probably take Putin. Um, you know, they'll probably depose Putin and replace him with somebody more capable as president. But we really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Putin's been president of Russia for dang near 20 years now. Uh, 20 to 23 years, I'm just guesstimating. Um, but we will see how the situation unravels as time goes on. If there's any more reports about what... The, uh, with this ongoing situation, I'll let y'all know. This has been your old pal Hondo on a somewhat news flash on the Ukrainian conflict and almost uh, rebellion within Russia. Um, okay, guys, if you like this video, please hit the like, share, and subscribe, and tell me what you think. Um, I'm not too uh, keen on this. I'm using uh, verified reports from. Uh, um, from different media outlets on this evolving situation. Alright guys, take it easy. It's been your own pal Hondo out.